Hi everyone, welcome back to Earl Grey Books and to Vlogmas Day 4. I'm Ellie and today I am talking about some of my reading plans for the Reading Women Challenge in 2020. <laughs> He's being funny over there. Um, so this is a reading challenge created by the Reading Women podcast. I'm sure you've all heard of them. They're amazing. Uh, but I will link the challenge uh, below if you're interested in participating. Um, so today I'm just showing you eight books that I've got for some of the different challenges that I've already kind of picked out and have decided that I'll be reading this for that challenge. Um, yeah, these may change. I'm got kind of a mix here of books for other challenges as well so I will be doing a video about my 2020 reading goals in general uh, in a couple of days time let's just wait for Percy uh, come on why is it always about the kitties hey why is it always about the kitties okay so these are not in a particular order so I haven't gone from like one to eight there are just ones that I saw on the list and I was like hey I have that book so uh, let's just start um, this is gonna go in the order of the way that I found the books rather than the challenge number so we're starting from the very oh no this isn't even the last one okay so we're starting with number 16 which is a book about a woman with a disability. I'm going to go with Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. I'm probably going to be reading this one in January because I just bought it and I'm excited for it, but I also know that I'm not going to have time to get to it in December. Um, so this one, the main character has, I can't speak, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and also the love interest also has a chronic illness so uh, marking off the disability and also obviously as someone with a disability I like to support books that have good rep and I've heard really great things about this one so that's that one uh, number 17 is a book with over 500 pages and I'm going with Hades Daughter which you can't really see because it's kind of dark um, by Sarah Douglas. This is a big one. How many pages is it? Um, ex well, there's an epilogue, but there's also a like uh, character glossary. Let's see. 737 uh, is the, <laughs> the total. This is book one in the Troy game series. Uh, I bought this one like I think this is from like 2011, so would really like to read it this year, <laughs> or next year rather. Um, number eight is to read an anthology by multiple authors. I'm going with Unbroken, which is another book about disability. So this is 13 stories about disabled teens, all by own voices, authors. Um, it's edited by Marie Nidge Kalp is I believe how you say it um, and it's got lots of exciting female authors in there as well as a few males um, but it's got people like Donnie L. Clayton, Corinne DeVis, Heidi Hallig, Cody Keplinger, um, Kayla Whaley who are all authors that I uh, enjoy the work of so I am super excited get to this one and I have also owned this for a little while maybe like a year and a bit so marking them off um, which one's this number 24 which is the last prompt is to read a book that was on the reading women shortlist awards um, or on their honorable mentions so there were none on there like I was going through the the two different like the fiction and the non-fiction and I was like I don't own any of these I don't really want to have to buy a book 
And then I got to the honorable mentions and this one came up. This is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Um, I literally just bought this one yesterday. So it was just like, yes, thank God. Um, so this is about the young woman who uh, spoke up about the Brock Turner. Uh, he assaulted her and she spoke up at the trial. I believe she wrote a letter. And yeah, I've been hearing amazing things about this one. So that's what we're going to go with for this one. <laughs> uh, okay, number 15 is a biography. Uh, so I managed to find one that is about a woman and written by a woman, which I'm really happy about. I have In Search of Mary Shelley by Fiona Sampson. Mary Shelley is one of my favorite writers and just like women, I guess. Um, I have also owned this one, I think from like 2017. And yes, excited biography, Mary Shelley should be good. Um, number 10 is a book about a female artist. Um, generally a visual artist was the prompt. Um, so I'm going with a photographer. And that is Vivian Mayer by Pamela Banos. Um, this was on my nonfiction November TBR, but I just didn't get to it. So uh, I think this might, my bookmark is peeking out the bottom because this is such a weird book and it like, I don't know, it's like so floppy that it doesn't even hold a bookmark in there. Um, yeah, I think this is one that might kind of go over, span over a month or two because I did start reading it and it is kind of, there's a lot in there, but it's interesting. We'll see. It might have just been the first few pages that were kind of dense and they're not really talking about her or her photography yet. Um, number nine is a book about or inspired by folklore. So I'm going with The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong Kingston. Um, this is kind of like a memoir, but also about like Chinese mythology and it matches my shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's kind of about mythology, Chinese mythology, and it sounds interesting. And again, this is one that I've owned for quite a few years now. Um, and then final one, we're here already, uh, is number six, which is to read a book about a, read a nonfiction book by a woman historian. We got there. Um, so I'm going with The Woman, The Women of Cousins War by Philippa Gregory. This also has two men, uh, David Baldwin and Michael Jones, but I feel like Philippa Gregory's name is the biggest on here and she's the reason I'm reading this. Um, and it's about three women, so I feel like it counts. Like it's mostly women, so yes. Again, I think I've owned this one since 2011 as well, so I would really like to read it. And I'm thinking this might be another one that I sort of read in January because I don't know, but I've just been feeling this book lately. And again, don't have time to read it in December. So there we are. Those are some of the books that I will be reading for the Reading Women Challenge. Uh, I'm planning on doing kind of like occasional updates on the challenge um, as I go along. Like I mentioned, I have a few reading goals for next year, different challenges that I'm participating in and so forth. Uh, so I might do like a challenge update every month or so. We will see, depending on obviously how many I'm reading. If I'm not reading anything, then there's no point. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Um, let me know if you're participating in the challenge. It would be great to follow along with other people so that I can
get some inspiration for the ones that I don't have anything for yet. Um, but again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. I have my non-fiction November wrap-up. So I'll see you all then. Bye!